situation. Yet here we are, uh, 39, 40 days later, you're still having to rush more equipment, more boom. There are still areas of the coast unprotected. Why is it taking so long? And did you really uh, act from day one uh, for a worst case scenario? Uh, we did. Uh, part of the problem you've got is, let's take the example of boom. Uh, the way the plans have been developed, and I'm not an expert on this, but this is as it's been explained to me. Uh, Pre-deploying boom would have been the right thing to do, making sure that there is boom right there in the region at various spots where you could anticipate if there was a spill of this size, the boom would be right there ready to grab. Uh, unfortunately, that wasn't always the case. Uh, and so, you know, this, this goes back to something that, that Jake t asked earlier. When it comes to the response since the crisis happened, I am very confident that the federal government has acted consistently with a sense of urgency. When it comes to prior to this accident happening, I think there was a lack of anticipating what the worst case scenarios would, uh, would be. And that's a problem. Uh, and as part of that problem was lodged in MMS and the way that that agency was structured. That was the agency in charge of providing permitting and uh, making decisions in terms of where uh, drilling could take place, but also in charge of enforcing the safety provisions. And as I indicated before, the uh, IG report, the Inspector General's report that came out, was scathing in terms of the problems there. And when Ken Salazar came in, he cleaned a lot of that up. But more need, uh, needed to be done and more needs to be done, which is part of the reason why he separated out the permitting function from uh, the functions that uh, involve enforcing the various safety regulations. But I think on a whole bunch of fronts, you had a complacency when it came to what happens in the worst case scenario. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll give you another example because this is something that uh, some of you have written about. Uh, the question of how is it that uh, oil companies kept on getting environmental waivers uh, in getting their permits approved? Well, it turns out that uh, the way the process works, first of all, there is a thorough environmental review as to whether a certain portion of the Gulf should be leased or not. So that's a thoroughgoing environmental uh, evaluation. Then uh, the, the overall lease is broken up into segments for individual leases. And again, there's an environmental review that's done. But when it comes to a specific company with its exploration plan in that one particular area, you know, they're going to drill right here in this spot. Uh, Congress mandated that only 30 days could be allocated uh, before a yes or no answer was given. That was by law. So MS, MMS's hands were tied. And as a consequence, what became the habit predating my administration was you just automatically gave the environmental waiver because you couldn't complete an environmental study in 30 days. So you, what you've got is a whole bunch of uh, aspects to how oversight was exercised in deep water drilling that were very problematic. And that's why it's so important that this commission moves forward and examines from soup to nuts, why did this happen? How should this proceed in a safe, effective manner? What's required when it comes to worst case scenarios to prevent something like this from happening? I continue to believe that oil production is important, domestic oil production is important, but I also believe we can't do this stuff if we don't have confidence that we can prevent crises from, uh, like this from happening again. Uh, and uh, it's going to take some time for the experts to make those determinations. And as I said, in the meantime, I think it's appropriate that we keep in place the moratorium that, uh, that I've already issued. Okay. Chip Reed. 
Thank you, Mr. President. First of all, Elizabeth Birnbaum uh, resigned today. Did she resign? Was she fired? Was she forced out? Uh, and if so, uh, why? And uh, should other heads roll uh, as we go on here? Uh, secondly, with regard to the Minerals Management Service, uh, Secretary Salazar yesterday basically blamed the Bush administration for the cozy relationship there, and you seemed to suggest that when you spoke in the Rose Garden a few weeks ago when you said for too long, a decade or more, most of those years, of course, the Bush administration, there's been a cozy relationship between the oil companies and the federal agency that permits them to drill. Uh, but you knew as soon as you came in, and Sec Secretary Salazar did, about this cozy relationship, uh, but you continued to give permits, some of them under questionable circumstances. Is it fair to blame the Bush administration, don't you deserve some of that? Well, well let, let me just make the, the point that I made earlier, which is Salazar came in and started cleaning house, but the culture had not fully changed in MMS, and I absolutely I take responsibility for that. There, uh, there wasn't sufficient urgency in terms of the pace of how those changes needed to take place. Um, there's no evidence that some of the corrupt practices that had taken place earlier took place under uh, the current administration's watch. But a culture in which oil companies were able to get what they wanted uh, without sufficient oversight and regulation, that was a real problem. Some of it was constraints of the law, as I just mentioned, uh, but we should have busted through those constraints. Um, now, with respect to uh, Ms. Birnbaum, I found out about her resignation today. Ken Salazar has been in testimony uh, throughout the day, so I don't know uh, the circumstances in which this occurred. Uh, I can tell you what I've said to Ken Salazar, which is that uh, we have to make sure if we are going forward with domestic oil production that the federal agency charged with overseeing its safety and security is operating at the highest level. And I want people in there who are operating at the highest level uh, and aren't making excuses when things break down, but are intent on fixing them. Uh, and I have confidence that Ken Salazar can do that. And his job is safe. Yes. Juliana. Thank you, Mr. President. Mm -hmm. We're learning today that oil, the oil has been gushing as much as five times the initial estimates. What does that tell you and the American people the ex about the extent to which BP can be trusted on any of the information that it's providing, whether the events leading up uh, to the spill, uh, any of their information? Right. Well, BP's interests are aligned with the public interest to the extent that they want to get this well capped. It's bad for their business. It's bad for their bottom line. They're going to be paying a lot of damages, and we'll be staying on them about that. So I think it's fair to say that they want this thing capped as badly as anybody does. And they want to minimize the damage as much as they can. I think it is a legitimate concern to question whether BP's interests in being fully forthcoming about the extent of the damage is aligned with the public interest. Right? I mean, they, their interest may be to minimize the damage and to the extent that they have better information than anybody else to not be fully forthcoming. Uh, so my attitude is we have to verify whatever it is they say about the damage. This is an area, by the way, where I do think our efforts fell short. Um, and I'm not contradicting my prior point that people were working as hard as they could and doing the best that they could on this front. But I do believe that when the initial estimates came of that there were, it was 5,000 uh, barrels spilling into the ocean uh, per day. That was based on satellite imagery and satellite data that would give a rough calculation. At that point, BP already had a camera down there, but wasn't fully forthcoming in terms of what did those pictures look like. And when you set it up in time-lapse photography, experts could then make a more accurate determination. Uh, 
The administration pushed them to release it, but they should have pushed them sooner.